Well, welcome. Welcome all to uh, this open meeting of, of the uh, Conflicts of Interest Board being conducted under the uh, provisions of the New York uh, State Open Meetings Law. And today there are three matters before us. Uh, they are amendments to two rules uh, dealing with uh, investments in securities, uh, with uh, the acceptance of gifts under certain circumstances, and also meals uh, in the course of, of uh, meetings, official meetings. So I guess the first uh, before us is, is a proposed amendment uh, relating uh, to, uh, to investments in publicly traded securities. We had this last time, uh, the board uh, commented on it, and now it is, it is back to us. So maybe Chris, why don't you take us through the changes? Absolutely. Thank you, Jeff. Sure. The proposed amendments to board rules section 104 regarding ownership of publicly traded securities returns to the board after consultation at the board's request with the Comptroller's Office and the Federal Office of Government Ethics. After this consultation, staff now recommends that the term mutual fund remain undefined for purposes of chapter 68. And so the, the distinction between diversified and sector-based funds would no longer appear in the proposed rules. Should the board proceed to, uh, to publish this rule, it will, uh, or uh, to, to proceed with this, this proposal, it will be submitted to the law department and the mayor's office of operations before being, uh, 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 published for a public comment. That, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, one, one question I had, we, we, define, uh, we define IRAs uh, that they would include them unless excluded by the definition. Uh, on, 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 but if you look at 2601.16, the, the, the text itself, it excludes IRAs from, from the, the, the definition of interests. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm happy to, happy to talk through that provision. Yeah, um, yeah. The, the charter section, so, so there are a couple of moving pieces here. Charter section 2601.16 does specifically excludes certain retirement vehicles from the definition of ownership interests. And those are articulated as pension plan, deferred compensation plan, or mutual fund, the investments of which are not controlled by the public servant, the public servant, spouse, domestic partner, or, emancip or unemancipated child, or in any blind trust. A, uh, uh, in an IRA uh, in, a, in an individual retirement account, a Roth IRA, uh, a simplified employee pension IRA, or a Keo plan, those are generally going to be investment accounts that the, the, the beneficiary of the account, the, the individual public servant, will have some degree of control over selecting the investments. And so that's to clarify that uh, that these types of accounts where no other exception applies, where no other exclusion applies, these types of accounts are treated as any other investment account. I see, not as a pension plan. Exactly, exactly. Okay, I understand that. Uh, the other question, I understand people who are uh, involved in the issuance of bonds uh, cannot hold or invest or trade in any of those uh, instruments and they can't trade on behalf of someone with whom they are associated. But this does not uh, prohibit the spouse, for example, of a public official from themselves uh, trading in, 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 in bonds. Well, because a spousal, because I, I, I thank you. That's that's uh, yeah. that's a very good uh, a good point. I, I believe implicitly that's that concept is wrapped into uh, ownership interests in in Chapter sixty eight, in that a spouse's ownership interests are imputed to the public servant, and so 
that uh, the situation that you're describing would fall within the prohibition because the spouse's ownership of city bonds would be imputed to the public servant who would fall under this very limited exception for the small number of public servants who exercise uh, exercise authority in, in those bonds. And this would be just the spouse or other people with whom one is associated? It would be just the spouse or unemancipated just, children, the spouse, domestic, domestic partner, or unemancipated domestic. children. If right. a if the, the father, say, of a public servant who is, uh, who, who is involved in the issuance of bonds, independent, completely independently of the public servant, were to invest in city bonds, that's not going to be imputed to the public servant. There's no, there's no violation of the prohibition on confidential information because, again, we're assuming that the father is doing this completely independent of any information um, that, that the child has, that the public servant has, and there's no use of the city position to, to benefit the father. And so where, where those investment decisions made by otherwise associated people, other than the spouse or domestic partner or unemancipated child, where, where those investment decisions are being made entirely independently of the public servants uh, uh, responsibilities regarding bonds, that's, those aren't going to be implicated by Chapter 68 or by this prohibition. But for a spouse, it would be. Uh, but for a spouse, it would be, yes. That, and that, we feel, is clear from, from this language. Yes. Okay. Then, all right. Are and I would just note yeah. one more, um, uh, just so th uh, to fix uh, uh, in... in uh, a typo on uh, or a, a, a citation that needs to be updated in proposed section paragraph C1, except as provided in paragraph D2. That should read C2 because D no longer exists. So I will make that change should the board proceed. Okay. Do we have any further comment on, on this rule? Proposed change? So I, I guess uh, hearing none, I'll ask for uh, approval of the board to proceed with the next step, which I guess is to submit it to the law department and the office of operations for- That's for correct. Okay. I hear a vote. Aye. 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 Okay. No no's. Let's go on uh, to, 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 to the, the next proposal, which uh, deals with, uh, with certain uh, gifts. Uh, dealing with morale and emergencies. Uh, so this is, uh, Chad, uh, this is yours? Yes. Okay. So the most significant change is in the previous version of the rule of the board review. It included a prohibition on certain managerial or supervisory employees receiving gifts that were sort of solely part of agency efforts to maintain morale and it prohibited these managerial or supervisory employees. And the concern was that this was a bit overbroad. This would capture everybody who approves timesheets, uh, a large number of public servants. And so at the board's direction, we consulted with DCAS about whether or not there was sort of a, a ready-made concept that would more narrowly, in a more narrowly tailored manner, target that sort of group of people. And in our consultations with them, they said the best option was uh, people who file annual disclosure forms, which captures substantial policymakers, people who have authority over contracts, people who have approval authority over construction projects, among, among other groups of people. And so that's the most significant change in that rule. There are a couple other less significant changes. Uh, the first is uh, consolidation of some of the provisions of J and then uh, a removal of a proposed limitation on gifts, on, on the value of gifts given from superiors to subordinates and just turning that into a, a permission. And then uh, just changes to the statement of basis and purpose reflecting those changes. Uh, Wayne raised a good point, which is in K3, the new K3, it's really sort of, uh, it's, all together because they're all permissions that peers can give gifts to each other and superiors can give gifts to subordinates but really it's sort of two ideas so we would propose just to break those out again into uh, a k3 
permitting public servants to give gifts to peers and a K-4 permitting superiors to give gifts to subordinates with uh, identical language, just uh, broken out into three and four. Okay, I have no objection to that. I, yeah, that that does, does make sense. Uh, the, the, the question about accepting gifts for morale, I mean, we've used now as a standard filing a financial disclosure report, which makes some extent sense that there are some people who do file financial disclosure reports who are fairly uh, uh, routine employees and they would simply be excluded for, for, that, for that reason. I mean, you need some cutoff, I, I guess that's one, but it, it is approximate. Yes, it, it is approximate. There's always going to be some like illness of fit when we're dealing with these types of categories, but to move from like supervisory and managerial, which was very broad to right. annual social forms, I think is, I think it's maybe 9,000 public servants out of almost 350,000. Uh, 8,900. Like, sorry? 8,900. 8,900, 8,900 public service out of almost 350,000. And that's a, it's, it's a much more uh, targeted. Yeah, it is. So, so if there's an event to, to, to uh, boost morale, say tickets are provided to, to a game or something for some group that did uh, some substantial uh, work, the, the, the supervisors in that group would just be excluded, right? Uh, or the division, the head of the division just couldn't come along. It would be the others. Okay. Yes. I'm, uh, any discussion beyond what we've done? Uh, uh, yeah. Back to K for a second, and I, I, I'm, I'm going to apologize if I make this longer than than it should be. Um, um, it's the one I I had the suggestion on, and maybe was overthinking. Uh, but um, but. Uh, I, I wonder, I just raised this question. It, it, it begins one, two, three, and then maybe a four. Um, it begins with the, the sort of exceptions, the exceptions about uh, weddings and then the exception about uh, uh, birthdays. Um, but I, I wonder if, if you, you, you just, we didn't want to flip the, um, the order of things and get the, the, main, the main rules up there at the top. The, the, the two main rules being a superior can give a gift to a subordinate who can accept it. And the second main rule is, or you could reverse the order, but the, 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 the other top rule is a um, uh, superior cannot accept a gift from a subordinate and a subordinate may not give a gift to a superior. So the, there, you, got, you got two things, okay to give down, not okay to accept from, from people below. And then you get to the exceptions. The exceptions are, and maybe you put the peers in there. I don't know where you put the peers, but, but uh, the exceptions are, you know, um, uh, uh, the, the somewhat broader okay. one for uh, weddings and the uh, and the narrower one for birthdays. Um, uh, uh, and I don't have strong feelings on that, but it, it strikes me that you kind of bury the lead um, if you if you put the if you put the, the the big rules down there in three and four. I mean, this is already buried in K. I, I don't know who's going to get to one hundred one K, but but um, uh, within K, at least you 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 start off with. Um, uh, uh, maybe you start off with, uh, you know, superiors cannot accept uh, gifts from subordinates. Then you go, superiors may give gifts to subordinates, and uh, and then you uh, are accept as noted herein. You know, uh, with the with the uh, uh, superiors given to um, uh, subordinates given to superiors, and then the and then the noted herein would be these uh, these uh, two exceptions that are now one and two. Um, if, if nobody else thinks that's a, even a, a remotely good idea, then, then I'm fine with the way it is, uh, the way staff suggests, and, and we can go on. Maybe what you, you're suggesting is, is that this be stated as a prohibition rather than a permission. Well, uh, uh, pro, prohibition on the uh, subordinate, uh, on the superior accepting, but, but also uh, maybe just... Uh, I would include a, a permission in there too, although these things are typically thought of as, as uh, uh, prohibitions, but I think we ought to say it if we mean it. So okay. you'd have a, a prohibition on the one hand of the uh, superior accepting, but a, a, a permission on the other hand of a superior giving. And, and those, those two um, truths, um, those two broad rules uh, be, uh, be stated up front. And then you get to this, 
you know, a little bit more complicated stuff about, I don't want to overstate it, it's not that complicated, but what you do about the two types of uh, events, the, 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 the lifetime events and the annual events. Right, so, so maybe you're saying a superior may not accept a gift from a subordinate, except, uh, here. Yeah. you know, uh, something not exceeding $10 individually or in the aggregate, or an appropriate uh, gift for, in a lifetime event. At, for, for a lifetime uh, marking event. And maybe that's all you have to say. Maybe we don't have to say uh, affirmatively that uh, peers may give gifts to one another or that uh, superiors may give gifts uh, to their subordinates. Maybe enough in a rule to state a prohibition. Uh, Jeff, just, just with yeah. respect to the affirmative statements, those yeah. are because they are, uh, Frequent topics of questions is, is understating it. It's almost daily where we're asked that type of question. And the additional clarity of, of putting it in the rule is to, to just have it someplace where if not your average public servant, at least uh, counsel to the agency, the agency ethics liaison would be aware that it's there and they could field those issues internally. It's just, uh, it's, it's so common as, as to... It, it, it's like sand on the beach, that those types of questions. Can I give gifts to each other? Can a boss give a gift to a subordinate? It's a, a daily occurrence that we, that we get those questions. I have another question, um, not related or related. Um, what, do you, the education uh, group of um, staff, I think putting that out in public um, and having that out there will be helpful for like regular, <laughs> Um, regular uh, uh, public employees to know that and do that a lot in, in like le letters or uh, emails or stuff like that. Yeah, that, that's part of the intention. Is that this, is, this is importing the idea from the advisory opinion into the rule. And then like really once it's in some place real, it's easy to get out there. That to, to have somebody read this long advisory opinion is much more complicated than just a one line in a rule. Great. And so the, the idea that I'm hearing is to take sort of one and two and then include sort of the general prohibition in front of both of them. Public, uh, superior public servants may not accept from subordinates, accept, right. and then really the text of it remains unchanged. And then we take existing three and we make existing three, one and two, where it says pursuing the charter section 2604B3, a public servant may give a gift to a subordinate public servant. And then two, pursuing the charter section B3, a public servant may give a gift or receive the gift from a public servant who is not a superior subordinate. Yeah, or you could actually say this provision does not prohibit a public servant from giving, uh, making a gift to a peer or a superior, a superior from making a gift to, to a subordinate makes it simpler and also gets the direct uh, message across for anybody reading it. Could, could I just hear that language again, Jeff? No, you would do the first, the first two uh, mm -hmm. the prohibitions and then you would say in another subdivision, uh, this, pro this provision th does not prohibit or a public does not prohibit gifts between uh, I guess equals, uh, and uh, or nor do, or gifts from uh, superiors to subordinates. So you just have that right there. I think it's clearer to say not the negative but the affirmative that something is permissible versus saying it, this section doesn't prohibit. I mean, I think to Nisha's point, just to have it clear that it's okay. But why don't we take because we're we're all drafting on the fly. No. Let's, let's give Chad a shot at uh, uh, incorporating some of the ideas because I feel like there yeah. might be two different sets of ideas that we're hearing. Wayne's ideas are slightly different from Jeff, your ideas. So let's give it a shot to see if we can incorporate them and, and bring it back to the board. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so let's, let's, let's do that. And then I guess move on uh, to the next meals at meetings. Uh, Chad, uh, this is yours. Is this the first time we're seeing this? 
I no, the board previously saw this uh, attached to sort of another provision of set of the rules. But the, the thing is that meals kind of stand alone in the rules. And sort of like while the rest yeah. of it is cooking, we can sort of move forward with E. Mm -hmm. And the, the thought is that existing 101E has never really provided that much clarity to public servants look, who find themselves in situations about whether or not they can accept a meal. Uh, the existing pr provision of the rules sets out a couple of scenarios and then people call and they ask, oh, am, am I in a one or in a four or in a five or whatever? And the, the existing scenarios aren't that helpful to like provide guidance on the ground for people. And the proposal would be to remove this scenario-based uh, consideration and just establish rules. Uh, at Romanets 1 to 4, where public servants can accept meals and refreshments if they don't solicit it, if they're available to everybody who's at the meeting or the event without charge, whether it's separable, uh, as long as it's not separable from the uh, meeting or event itself, and then the meeting or event wasn't scheduled to get a meal. And we think that that's, that would be a clearer way to provide public servants guidance about this idea where really sort of like the overarching principle is that public servants shouldn't be accepting free things. From people and this sets out like a, a more tailored set of considerations for this exception. Yeah I see I, I, my only question is does this rule take care of the other situations that were discussed in the the old the current rule? That is this seems to contemplate you're sitting in a meeting and it's lunchtime and somebody's going to come by and give everybody sandwich and anybody can, can do that too. but there are other situations as well right and they're set forth in, in, in this other you know you're a company cafeteria you're, you're away you're in a situation where you can't pay uh, maybe a smaller meeting where it's where not everybody will be offered the meal but 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 nonetheless it's I don't know it's under fifty dollars or, or, or it's not not a significant number. So the question is what, whether this does this does it all, that this gives you the guidance. It seems to deal, okay. There may be some confidentiality issues here, so I, I, I okay. I, I can promise you we can't read. <laughs> okay. Uh, that I, I, I'm not sure that this, this rule deals with all possible situations. It deals, it seems to be with one scenario, but, but, but I don't know that it covers everything. We would say that one, we're never called about the cafeteria situation. No one has ever called us and said, I'm in a cafeteria, can I take this food? And I suppose the, the equivalent of that would be something like uh, when we were in the office, the Google cafeteria, where the food is free and available to everybody. It, it actually meets all the, the qualifications in, in the new proposed rule. And then uh, like this, this uh, I think the questions, the, the criteria that are established in one through four meet all those things. Uh, like, let's say the, the hypothetical is always like the closing. People are at a closing, it's going, you're on like hour 12 of the closing and then spring rolls show up or sandwiches show up and everyone's just eating this. It, it satisfies that requirement. It's available to everybody. No person in the meeting is taking out their credit card and having to pay into the spring rolls or the sandwiches. It's just there at the closing. And uh, it's not separable from the event. You're still closing this deal. It's just that it's, it's taking 12 hours to do it. So we, we actually think that I, I this- guess, I, I have a follow-up question from Jeff. I, is what, was the, what was the history of the original rule? Like these five circumstances that were specifically identified and then codified, like, I, I'm assuming, and, and I'm asking if you know, were, were they codified because these were recurring issues? The, uh, the regulatory history is sparser for some of these older rules. I, I don't know whether or not it was prompted by yeah, individual me, questions. It's, it's possible, and I'm not sure this is the one, but in some of these gift rules, my recollection is that there were board of ethics advisory opinions mm -hmm. and the, the language was lifted wholesale pretty much from the board of ethics opinions. Um, I, I, I can't tell you for sure that meals was one, um, 
but that, that may be the case. Um, and I'm not sure that the Board of Ethics opinions, they, they were probably somewhat informed on experience, uh, and, 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 but who knows, they might have been, they might have been pulled from other jurisdictions who'd struggled with this and somebody simply said, you know, we're not going to struggle with this any longer. Somebody drafted this. It, 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 it covers a lot of the things we're concerned about, either permissive and, and, and what's permissive and what's not permissive. And, and we'll, just, uh, we'll just stick with it. Um, I, I always found it completely unhelpful. And I, I confess to being a, a meals hawk. That may be from a, a, a breadth of um, inexperience because I never got out and, and got offered any lunches. I always sat in the office. So, but, but um, it, it, may be, it may be that uh, the, the, the board members feel differently about what's permissible and what's not. Um, the thing that, that Chad describes, who could, you know, a, a closing and uh, spring rolls and sandwiches, nobody could care, or the company cafeteria, you know, hard to imagine uh, somebody caring, um, because unless somebody had that nice a cafeteria, and how often is that going to come up? On the other hand, I, if you're ever in a restaurant, it seems to me that the public servant's got to pay, um, because because uh, it's permissible. And because my basic rule is you, you buy your own meals, we buy our own meals. And if, and if it seems extravagant, then your city reimburses you or, or they don't. Your city agency reimburses you or you, they don't. Uh, um, um, and, but I don't, I, I guess, I mean, I don't even know, I, I don't even know how the, 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 the you, you're, in a, you're in an earnest meeting, it gets to be lunchtime, people say we're gonna go out and have, have a meal and, and continue to talk and come back to the, to the, the, the office, which may not have a, they, they don't they want to, they want something nicer than ordering sandwiches in. They go out, have a nice meal, but they continue to work over the meeting, but the bill is 75 bucks a plate. Um, the, the public servant pays the 75 bucks um, and, uh, and, and asked to be reimbursed and whether they can be reimbursed is I think a, a matter of comptroller and or agency policy. I don't know, I, you know, if you're in that situation, I think you ought to be reimbursed, but I, I don't think the, the, the meal ought to come from the, uh, the, the private party who presumably is looking for something from the city. Although there is that, that small subsection of cases and Anthony, or, or you Jeff may speak better to this, people who are trying to get help from the city and, and maybe they've gone to a foundation looking for money from the city. And, uh, and in that case, the, the, the city is the reverse of the typical situation. The city is a supplicant and, and um, uh, you know, if you, as long as you're asking for something for the city, who cares if they give you a, a meal because uh, because you're asking them for a whole lot more than a meal, um, and they're not they're not looking for anything from you. Um, so I'm I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm talking a little bit against myself there, but I'm, I'm I have a hard time thinking about this except in terms of the examples, and I think um, the closing example or the settlement, the long settlement meeting, you know, that drags on and drags on, you're trying to settle a big case and, um, and you, you know, you're gonna keep working, unfortunately on the thing. Um, you gotta be able to, to, uh, to eat the food that's brought in. Um, so anyhow, that's, that's enough of that. But I, I, I find this one almost impossible um, um, without talking about specific examples, then how to, how to write the rule to fit those examples. And if we don't agree about the examples, then, then we, we might want to talk that through too. But, uh, um, and I, I, maybe I'd look to staff. Uh, Chad seems to be getting a lot of these calls. Are you getting meals calls? Well, nobody's getting together now, right? So. Right. It, it, it's, it's, a, a, it's a good time to revise the meals rules because it's legal for us to eat indoors <laughs> each other for, you know, under many circumstances. Um, so when we, when we, you know, as we worked through this, you know, we were uh, obviously we had in mind the existing 101E examples, and then also the kinds of questions that we get, which, which obviously, uh, uh, you know, is as well, if not better than, uh, than staff about the kinds of questions public servants are asking about meals. Um, I, do you is do you think I mean, and we also started from that uh, position of that the, the default answer should be public servants pay for their own meals and it, it should only be in these um, 
uh, you know, sort of more rare or circumstances that they're they're accepting meals, including the kinds of scenarios that we've just been discussing. Do you do you think that we're uh, missing the mark with our attempt to uh, rulify this? If that, uh, if I can coin a term, perhaps. Well, the, the, does I guess this derives in large part from the gift prohibition. I assume except me meal is, is a gift. But that, so, so, so the, the Wayne's example of someone takes you out and for a, the bill is $75, that, that absolutely is prohibited. But if the, if, if, the, if the bill were $20, for example, and well within the, 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 the range of uh, permissible gifts, would, would that be a problem? You know, if two or three people go out, you know, let's put a lobbyist aside, that's another, another issue. But, but if you're having a discussion with somebody on city business and uh, there are a few of you there and somebody's paying for it uh, and it's not extravagant, is that, is, is that prohibited or covered by, by this rule? Yeah. Well, I think, yeah, so this rule would cover that. Of course, you know, you, you uh, as you mentioned earlier, there's a, the $50 de minimis uh, 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 you know, would also apply here, uh, but there's a, a, a limit, you know, that's that's $50 in any given yeah. year right. from the same source or even people from that source. So, um, you know, if you if you were offered a $35 or $40 meal, you, know, you could certainly accept that, but that would probably be a one, uh, a one time a year uh, possibility. Uh, and you wouldn't be able to fit the $75 meal use, into that exception, obviously. No, but, but you could do the $20 meal, say, uh, where there's been no other, other meal with that individual outside of this rubric. Could you yes. not meet in a restaurant one-on-one -on -one to discuss an issue? Not with a lot yeah. of people. But yes. That, that does not seem to, to deal with this. If this is the universe under which you could accept meals, somebody looking at this would I, I think reasonably walk away with the conclusion that you cannot have a give a, a meal, cannot accept a meal uh, in in any other setting, but uh, but the 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 meeting at which you're gathered around the table for a closing and uh, some food is distributed. The fifty dollars got has got to apply here. So you're you're right, Jeff. That could get. That's that. the right. That's the twenty six oh four b five. It's all we're right, always right. in the valuable gift context. Yes, and I, I agree with that, certainly within this universe. The question is whether there are other circumstances where you'd be having a meal where you're within the 2605 limitation. The, does this deal with every situation? I mean, there's some mention here. You know, you, you're in a club, you're, you're, you're out of town. There are just a whole series of situations where you may have a meal. You, you, you may adjourn to a restaurant and continue meeting uh, well, you may take a break and have a meal, but but it's within within twenty six uh, within the twenty six oh five limitation. Uh, so my question is whether this deals with everything. This, this seems to deal with one scenario of 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 um, where the public uh, employee may receive a meal, subject to the fifty dollar limit, of course, but doesn't deal with other other scenarios you could uh, posit, some of which were in the old rule, there are others one could think of. And if, if this is intended to be the universe under which uh, you can accept a meal, it seems to be uh, unusually restrictive. It doesn't take into account other circumstances. Uh, well, it, it's intended, it's definitely intended to be a you know fairly restrictive meal. It starts from the premise of uh, under you know, most circumstances, public servants should be paying for their own meal. Um, and then obviously, just like all gifts, you, you know, you have the, you have the $50, uh, what, you know, within a 12 month period scenario. And then this is intended to be a narrow exception for when public servants are essentially being offered meals while they're in the, uh, you know, in the course of being in business meetings uh, where it is, uh, where it's a narrow exception for sort of trying to address with that that kind of circumstance, um, and that otherwise the it, it's intended to be uh, 
uh, it's intended to be restrictive, that public servants shouldn't be getting meals from people who are doing business with the city uh, as the starting place. And, and, and I'd add to that, and Jeff, because you, 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 I think, alluded to this, the, uh, the out-of-town situation. When people go to an uh, uh, out-of-town conference, out-of-town whatever, the city covers your expenses. They cover your room and board. Um, but they don't put you up in a hotel in the city. We had that, we had that case recently with a board of election official um, who... Uh, and, 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 but when you're out of town on, on city business, they, the city pays for your meals, the city pays for your um, a hotel. Uh, it's, it's the in-town example. Um, uh, and, uh, and of course, $50 is covered. And then you got to think what else is okay uh, when you're in town that's over 50. And that's what, that's, that's the one where I think we've seen historically the problem, and I'm thinking of the meals that the former um, president of the Queen's uh, public library bought for a bunch of people kind of routinely, where the relationships just seem to get cozy and, uh, and, and people think that essentially anything goes, and this is sort of like, we're, we're, these are almost goodwill meetings we're attending and, uh, and, and the next thing you know, you got, I forget the numbers there, but these were, these were several hundred dollar, five, four, five, six hundred dollar meals. Am I, am I crazy about those numbers? That's what they're, they're more than that. More than that. Yeah. Um, and, and just people lost a sense of proportion. And I don't think we're, and here's the, I mean, this is, Anthony, I may be looking to you as much as anybody. The, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to prohibit anything that should be going on. And, uh, I'll give you an example, one we kind of heard of sometimes. There would be, um, often law firms, could be engineering uh, outfits, but who, who would offer CLEs and, and they would have working relationships with a city agency. They might practice in a particular field and would, would invite the, um, the uh, attorneys from that uh, city agency to come to the CLE and the um, and the, uh, the agency thought it was a good thing because there was, there was, uh, th these were useful programs and good for the lawyers to get this training. So there was, no, there was no qualm about accepting this free CLE for which nobody else was being charged. Um, uh, and, and they seemed to serve meals at these things. Maybe, maybe the meals fell under the $50 exception because I don't think they were fancy, but um, it was like a lunchtime meal. Who, I mean, who would care about that? Um, as long as the agency had, I think, felt comfortable about the them accepting the training in the first place, um, uh, who'd care? Uh, but but um, uh, it, it, it's that it's that it's that Queen's Library. I don't want to pick on anybody there, but uh, either the giver or the receiver. Uh, but um, uh, that was the one that just said that can't be, and, and maybe maybe that wasn't permissible under the uh, uh, the old rule. Um, uh, but I, I, the, I mean, the, the public servants in those cases, at least some of them, I think, had at least, if not reasonable, then at least a good faith belief they were doing what they were supposed to be doing as part of the job. Um, and, and you want to you want to say no, that that can't be okay. I mean, I, I guess I'm Jeff. You're concerned about it being too restrictive, and once we've got. The, it's clear that fifty dollars is in there, and I mentioned out of town because I think that's a that's a distraction. But that's that's okay too. Is it okay with a third party pays for it? I'm not so sure. The city pays for it. I'm struggling to find a scenario once you factor in the fifty dollar limit or the threshold. I'm struggling to find a scenario where these factors don't work well. So Jeff, I. I uh, Let me, I'll give you an example. So, a so couple of uh, city, city lawyers are, are, are uh, negotiating or discussing with an outside party some issue of city, of city business that uh, are legitimately being discussed. And somebody suggests, okay, when you have time to do this, why don't we meet over lunch at, uh, at, a, at, at, a, uh, at a diner? And uh, you have this discussion at a diner, the three of you, and uh, 
the bill, you know, is under twenty dollars, and uh, the non-city employee uh, attendee so, uh, picks up the check. Uh, I would, if I were there, you know, I, I, I've been in those situations. I would say, of course, pay your own way. I mean, I mean, no question about that. But is it a violation of uh, of Chapter sixty eight uh, to accept under those circumstances uh, a eighteen dollar meal? Uh, someone picks up the check. I don't know that it fits in that it fits into to this uh, precisely. The, I guess this is one scenario, but there are other scenarios at which meals would come up. And as long as you're within the $50 range, uh, I think it's, it, it's really, it, it, it's important practice not to accept, uh, even, if it's a, even, even if it's a small amount, although maybe, you know, sometimes the cup of coffee at the cafe or whatever, uh, you don't split that, uh, but, uh, are we saying that if under those circumstances you were in violation of Chapter 68 and uh, subject to penalties? And I don't think Chapter 68 supports that necessarily. If we are adopting some new rule now and we're, we're, we're intending to be far more restrictive, well, that's another that's another issue. But but, but this is really in the context of cleaning up our rules and not necessarily in the context of any study or any consideration of uh, what, what our rules ought to be for uh, under these circumstances. It is a consolidation of, of, of what we've got in, 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 in terms of our, our exercise of taking previous opinions and turning them into rules. It's, it, it's in that rubric. So if, if we intend to do something very different, then maybe it ought to be on the basis of some uh, in, in, empirical study. Uh, here's, you know, here are questions we've got in the past, here are abuses we've seen. Uh, maybe this is an approach that the board ought to take. I, I just think this is, this would change, change the law, change the applicable rules in, in a significant way. Maybe I, I, I'm reading it uh, too narrowly, but but I, I, I think we ought to give some thought to that. Um, Jeff, we don't intend to, uh, the rule does not prohibit, because the definition of valuable gift is still always 50, the example that you posited of a meal at a diner would not be prohibited by this rule. So if there's a, a language what the, the scenario that you posit, the, the, what we get and what the enforcement cases that we've seen is a meeting, we're gonna discuss city business, but let's, let's sit at a expensive restaurant and order bottles of wine and steak, no. and then you're significantly over 50. This rule never prohibits the $18 meal. So if, if we just added to the language, right, which is not in the original rule either, the valuable gift of a meal or a restaurant to sort of signal that this is only intended to cover meals of $50 or more because we're not, the, the intention is not to change the rule, it's just to create factors that are more comprehensible because the factors, Fernando, in answer to your question, uh, th these factors in the original E are from June 1990. The board had not been functioning in any meaningful way when these, they were just trying to throw rules at, at the world to try to start implementing chapter 68. So we've, the board has never gone back to these factors as a practical matter, staff hasn't implemented these things because as, as someone said, Ethan, Chad, we're never asked about a company cafeteria. We're asked about a restaurant. Right. Well, can we have a meeting at a restaurant? Right. But that, that's why I come back to it. Once you factor in the threshold. Right. <laughs> because when I read this, you know, I had to remember about the threshold. When I first read it, without the threshold, I, I thought it was overly restrictive. And then once I factored in the threshold, it's it it makes sense. I think it makes sense to 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 a public official that if there's something like a coffee or you know a drink, you know, none of that's going to be implicated by this rule. But it's it's the expensive meals, it's expensive drinks. That's all the stuff that you have to be worried about once you get over the 50. And then you factor in these four things. And, and I think, you know, having those four factors is helpful for people to be like, okay, if I'm in the plus 50 range, what are the things I have to look at to see whether or not I'm in violation? That yes, but, but, but uh, I thought what I heard is these four factors still have to be within the 50 range. 
right? We're not, we're not no, saying that, that if you meet all these requirements, you can be given a $100 <laughs> meal while you're... Because, because gifts of under $50 aren't prohibited. Gifts they, over $50 are prohibited. So, so Fernando, to answer your question, $50, $50 applies to this as well, does it not? It applies meaning that in order to accept a $50 meal, 50 and up, you have to meet these factors. Exactly. But if it's a $45 meal, then it's not a valuable gift within 2604b5 and it's not prohibited. So Jeff, is your question, your concern, maybe this is too permissive or for the, we're talking only about the over 50s now. For the over 50s, assume we just, we just put the $50 in the rule, or I don't know, use the word valuable gift, but for the over 50, are you, are you concerned about this being too permissive or too restrictive? I, I, I read, the, well, the way I read this is that this is within the $50 range. But even if you meet these requirements, uh, you're, 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 you're not going to be able to accept something over $50. But but if if if, if that's, that, that's correct, that, that if you, if if it's over, not, right? But that's not. I think Fernanda, you, you see it differently. And I think Carol, you, you just saw it differently. Meaning that if you meet these four factors, uh, you can uh, you, you can accept uh, food or drink valued at over fifty dollars. Right. That's the right. That, that's that's the rule. That's the same as like the travel thing. If you meet these requirements, then you could accept otherwise prohibited gift of travel from a firm doing business with the city. Here, you can only accept an otherwise prohibited gift, in other words, a gift that would be prohibited by 2604b5, if these four uh, criteria are met. Now, maybe Wayne's suggestion of just including the 50, if that seems confusing, just putting the number into the rule, yes. so that it's clear that it's not all <laughs> meals, it's meals valued at 50 or more. I think maybe if that, if that yeah, so. So Maybe you could accept three meals. Meals or refreshment valued at fifty dollars or more at a meeting attended in the course of, and then the rule would proceed. Yeah, you know, we could say an otherwise prohibited that would otherwise be prohibited without actually saying fifty dollars. I don't want to, you know, yeah, put a roadmap it, it, in there for people to. Uh, Forty-nine ninety-nine. Kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, do we? So, my, the only the only concern about that is we, the the. The one thing about the fifty dollars is it's fifty dollars from a single source in a year, so you can't just keep getting, you know, forty nine dollar meals uh, over and over and over and over again, right? So maybe so the other su possible way of doing this that Wayne and Carolyn were suggesting is by just using the term valuable gift, which is defined at Board Rule one hundred one A to mean uh, gifts of uh, fifty dollars or more. Uh, given uh, by uh, uh, the same source in a 12-month yeah. period. So that way we're importing that defined term into this rule and uh, and it captures all that meaning in it. Yeah, well, the, you say, or, or that otherwise would be prohibited as, as, as a valuable gift or something of that sort. So it could say- Because it may be less than 52 if an agency adopts a rule <laughs> that, uh, which we permit agencies to do. You, yeah, but we we wouldn't want to we wouldn't want to get into the business. I no, think of no. saying that that would be a Chapter sixty eight violation. I think if an agency has a lower gift limit, that's just an agency disciplinary <laughs> issue. Okay, so if we said just that would otherwise be prohibited as a valuable gift, it could read a public servant may accept free meals or refreshments that would otherwise be prohibited as valuable gifts at meetings attended in the course of. Yeah, the exactly, meeting. exactly. Yeah. Great, that's great. Okay. Except that any dissent from accepting that change in, in the text. So if there isn't, we, we can approve this. What, what, is our, what is our next uh, our next step on this chat? This the next step we would submit it to the law department and the mayor's office of operations for review. It's already been preliminarily reviewed by the right, law department. Right. But that was some time ago. So uh, okay. <clears throat> any objection to proceeding with that? Hearing none, I, I, I guess that uh, concludes the uh, public hearing portion of our meeting today. Thank you all for attending.